Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so, Alicia, you have a new job. Yes. You've been in it for about two weeks. Exactly. And yeah, so we'll get we'll get we'll get to that. But before we do, let's just get this out on the table. GM recall. What's been the biggest learning that you've taken away from that? I think the biggest learning is to um, you can't be too transparent. Um, in whatever you do, you, you have to be transparent internally and you have to be transparent externally. And also the relentless focus on the customer in every decision that you make um, is the only way to go. And I knew that before uh, because of my role in quality and customer experience, but the extent that you needed to drive that throughout the organization for every person in the company was so important. So let's, let's talk about your, your new role. What is the mandate? So the mandate in my new role, I have responsibility for customer experience and I also have responsibility for our um, connected customer technology. And so the mandate is really to make sure that we're exceeding customer expectations at every touch point. So the interactions that they have with the company, um, with our dealership, um, also with the product, the technology that we put in the vehicle. Um, infotainment systems are going to become even more prevalent in automobiles and we need to make sure that they're uh, best in class, that they're exceeding expectations. And then also it's a profit and loss, so we want to make money um, in doing that, which is important as well. Great. Um, so talk a little bit about why Mary Barra tapped you for this this position, you've known Mary a long time. What, it's a hard question, but what, what did she see in you? Yeah, I've known Mary uh, for about 12 years. I had a chance to work, with, uh, work for her when she was the plant manager at uh, one of our uh, facilities. And so the conversation that I had with Mary was that um, this space uh, requires a lot of innovation. It requires a lot of change. It requires a leader who is truly focused on the customer in order to lead General Motors into an area that we um, have not been in before. And she couldn't think of a better person in the company um, to do it. And that it was as equally as important as the work that I did in quality, but in many ways it was more important. And so how could you say no? Um, to doing that, so I agreed to do it. So at our, um, our MPW summit earlier this year, we asked Mary if she had ever asked for a raise. So have you ever asked for a raise? So I have asked for a raise, and I actually asked Mary for a raise. Great, okay, um. great, there you go, there you go. So, so we always like to ask the audience, who here has not asked for a raise? Okay. okay. Small, but I, small yeah, number. it's a small number, but I will tell you, I didn't ask for a raise until I was a senior leader. Um, in the company. I always just, you know, trusted that I'm working hard, I'm being recognized, and because I had promotions on a pretty regular basis, you know, every two years, I always thought that I was being compensated uh, well. And then I had a situation where um, I was a plant manager, and I was actually doing the plant manager role, and I was also the vehicle chief engineer, so I was responsible for the product, um, the, the technical aspects of the product, and we brought a guy in who was my second in charge. And uh, when we brought him in and I saw his salary, I almost fell out of my chair. <laughs> <laughs> because I thought, oh my gosh, I, um, I need to make more money here, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> because I'm doing the plant manager's role, but I also have this vehicle chief engineer's role. But in that case, I'll tell you, within two weeks, I, got, I didn't ask. I was trying to okay, well, how am I going to approach it? I can't go and say, oh, I saw his salary, now I need to be paid more. I need to put together a business case as to why I think I need to be paid more. And within a couple of weeks, I was, remember driving home, and my uh, manager at the time called me, and he says, hey, I've got some good news. And so it was, I got a raise, like, and I didn't have to ask. So when I had to ask, you know, it was kind of something that I had to get my mind around because I thought, okay, well, um, I'm doing two roles. Um, I am making progress. Um, I'm making a lot more than I was making before, but I still felt that that I, you know, needed to be um, compensated more. And I was talking to, with Mary, and I told her, um, you know, I appreciate the opportunities. Um, however, this is what I've done. This is what I bring to the table, and I think I need to be compensated for that. And she looked at me and she said, "I agree. Let me take a look at it." And uh, and she boss. did. That's a good and she said, well, let me take a look at it. She said, um, I'm not going to make any promises, uh, but let me take a look at it. She says, I think you've got some really good points. And she came back, and, I, and she, she you know, did what I 
more than I expected, so I was happy with that. Excellent. So you're in a very consumer-facing role now, but you started your career as an engineer. How did you get interested in math and science? Was that something that was always appealing to you? So I was always um, strong in math and science um, growing up. Um, I had an older sister who loved science, and she was a couple of years older than I was, and she had this idea that, oh, I'm going to be a brain surgeon. And so she, um, when she was in middle school, they dissected a cat, and I can remember her bringing the brain home. And she had this little brain, and she had it like in a plastic bag. And so, so I, because she was my older sister, I always tried to emulate what she did. And so because she liked science, I just continued to pursue math and science. And the other thing that I did is I liked to fix things. So in our house, if something broke, I was always, they always caught me. Well, she can fix it. And in fact, I used to break things so I can put them back together. So. I like math and science, but I like to fix things. And someone said, oh, well, engineers do that. And I had no idea what an engineer did. And I was in middle school. And so I remember walking around telling people, I'm going to be an engineer. I'm going to be an engineer. But I really didn't know what that meant. And then my junior year in high school, I had an opportunity to attend um, a program for minorities interested in engineering. And it was at Kettering University at the time, which was General Motors Institute, and I attended the uh, program for six weeks in the summer. So summer before senior year, while all of my friends are having fun, I'm on campus taking four you know, college level courses, calculus, organic chemistry, um, computer science, and I can remember that program. I was like, this is crazy. I cannot believe it, calculus. And, um, and I can remember coming home and I said, I'm not gonna be an engineer. This is, <laughs> I'm more of a people person. I'm just not going to do this. <laughs> But I found myself, as I was applying for different universities, I was looking at universities that had strong technical programs. And so I found myself chucking the box for engineering. Because truly, it was what I believe what I was meant to do. Um, and so that's how, that's how it came about for me. I'm going to go to audience questions in a second. But first, you jumped around to different fields before you landed in the auto industry, even though you are from the Detroit area. How did you manage your career? Did you have a five to 10 year plan? Was that how you thought about your, your professional life? You know, I did not have a five, uh, definitely not a 10 year plan. Um, I majored in chemical engineering. So for me, it was such a, um, a hard discipline. When I graduated, it was, I'm gonna use this degree. I am going to work as a chemical engineer and I actually worked in the pharmaceutical industry for a couple of years and then I all worked for food um, and food products. And when I had the opportunity to join General Motors, I joined General Motors in an area that was typically mechanical engineering. And so at that point, it was, I wanna be an engineer. I wanna use the engineering, it doesn't have to be chemical. And, and after being with General Motors for a couple of years and I was wor working on the tooling that we use to build our products and our plants, I, um, I raised my hand and said, you know what, if I'm going to work for the automobile industry, I need to know what it takes to build cars. I really want to work in the plant. And, and at that time, that wasn't a popular thing to do, to go from the, you know, the product side of you know, either doing process tooling or actually you know, doing the design or engineering for the car to putting the parts together. And it's, there's nothing glamorous, right, about working in the manufacturing environment. And I had a chance to, um, to, to do that. And, and just because I asked to do that, I was initially discouraged, uh, you know, saying, are you sure you want to do that? You'd be a great engineer. We, we have other opportunities for you. And I had the opportunity to work in the plant for two years. Um, and it was a snapback where, okay, you can work in two years. After the two years, you decide, stay in the plant or come back. To engineering and it was amazing because I spent two years there I learned a lot about myself um, and I liked it and I was I was very good at it and I ended up staying in the plant in a more production role and I ended up you know moving around the plant um, in different leadership capacities and it was the best decision I made now there was a lot of risk because it was moving further away from the technical training however the core skills of solving problems asking the right questions, the things that you learn in engineering, I was able to use it in that environment. And with my people skills, it actually enabled me to be very successful there. Great. Do we have any questions from the audience? Right over there. Wait, sorry, just mic's coming, sorry. 
So how would you encourage women to go into take math? Um, I know that I've read a little bit about women actually not wanting to take math or go into engineering because they are scared of failure. So what are your thoughts on that? I come from a little bit of a biased position. My dad's a math professor and I'm an economist. So just your thoughts. Yeah. So I do a lot with, with STEM programs and I, I work a lot with um, elementary, middle school, and even high school students. And what I see is, and, I, and by the way, I have um, nine and 12 year old sons, right? So what I see, in, especially at the elementary level, um, I see girls being just as strong and very capable um, in, in the math and in the science area. And I don't know what happens in middle school that we, I don't know, get discouraged or we, we dumb ourselves down to where we don't believe we can do it. But I think that's the critical point in middle school, encouraging girls that this is still good, that you can do this, that you have the, the uh, intellectual capability to do this, and that there's also many fields that you can go in, um, you know, in the STEM area where math, having a strong ma uh, foundation in math is important. So I, I, it's, it's something that we really need to work on, and I think the earlier that you do it, the better. But I, I do a lot with my son's classes, and I can see the girls are strong in math. They're strong in science. And then in middle school, quite frankly, is where I see um, a shift. And I think that's where we need to focus. But I think we have to tie it to there's value. There's value in um, continuing to build those skills. Great. Mm -hmm. OK, last question. Um, I have to ask you this because you're in the auto industry. What car do you drive? <laughs> I am currently driving an Escalade Platinum XL. So I have a big SUV that I'm driving, um, and I'm driving it because it's not yet in the market. So I'm driving it to evaluate if it's ready for the market. And so I am fortunate to um, have that. My kids love the, the SUVs. I used to run one of our plants that built SUVs. I'm partial to it. And, um, and it's our flagship product, so it's great. Terrific. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, everybody.